Hey everyone, standing here with Matt Lenny, the manager of Lenny's Orchard in the Goulburn Valley in Australia. And we're in the middle of a pear block. Matt, what sort of pears are we in? Okay, this is one of our traditional packet blocks. It's uh, approximately 50 years old. It's um, spacing is about 5.5 metres by 5 metres. Yeah, it's pollinated by, by Josephines and traditionally how we've been growing pears for a long time. A 50 year old tree, Matt, you know, the wood inside of the tree is certainly not 50 years old, except for our big trunk and, and some of our subframe there. How are you managing keeping this wood young and why are you doing that? We have a general rule that we really don't want any wood in the tree older than four years old. We're instructing our pruners and uh, to prune out anything that's, that's older than four years old. Anything that's one year old, so we have a, a, a three year cycle. Anything that's one year old that's flat, we are uh, encouraging to keep in. One third of it is going to be one year old, one third of it's going to be two years old, and one third is going to be three years old. Uh, there are some four year old bits of wood that slip through, but generally that, that is, that's the cycle that we try and keep. So the difficult part is encouraging the pruner to leave a one third of one year old wood in the tree. When we're instructing our pruners to, to leave one year old wood, the one year old wood then turns into two. Two year old wood then is, uh, has a good covering of two year old buds. We then encourage the pruner to count two to three to four buds depending on the size of the wood, and cut. This ensures that the fruit is set, it set stays on the tree. And as you can sort of see, this, this had four big buds on it, so it's got four big bunches of pears. Um, it's by itself, it's not complicated, it's a single structure uh, branch. And as you can see, there's lots of fruit on it that looks like they're going to set. This is a way of ensuring that you have a crop each year. You prune the pears onto the tree, we call it. So Matt, we're standing in a block of Rico, which is a variety developed in Australia at Tatura, just down the road. Can you tell us a bit about the variety? This is a cross between Camise and, and Corella. It come it matures about a week after Packham's. It's a beautiful eating pear. It's a, it's a blushed pear. It has the ability to grow quite large. It's a beautiful eating pear. It can be eaten uh, straight off the tree. It does improve with conditioning and it usually stores quite well, up to 10 months quite easily. Yeah. You know, this block, it is very hard to believe this is actually on D6, the same as those 50 year old trees. How are you keeping this tree relatively small? Like that tree had a had a trunk the size of a basketball and here we are with, with a tennis ball size trunk holding six stems. How are, we, how are we doing this? Well, first of all, the reason why we did plant on D6, the availability of quince fruit stocks when we planted this were low. They were available, so I chose for a block on D6 and a block on quince A. And ever from the start of, of, of planting, it was all about controlling the bigger. We designed the block so that there were six stems coming off each, each tree and treating each stem as an individual tree. The rows are four metres apart by 1.5 giving a, uh, a gap between each each stem of 500 mils. Yeah, and, and if we come in and look at the tree here, we've got essentially these small little units that you're hanging just, just a few fruit on. And, and being a red blush pear, do you find that you have to hang that as, as a single? Yeah, you need the light penetration into there to give it the red blush. And uh, we've found the morning light actually with, with the with red variety. The morning sun actually gives the best color on the, on the pear. So uh, we, we've basically tried to keep each, each pair is a one, hang them as ones and twos, depending on the crop load. Keep any bigger aiding sort of uh, larger wood out of that tree, so to eliminate the, the shade on the pears. And so just another one on Vigor, Matt. When we look at, say, your, your apple trees, you tend to have a straight trellis as standard, whereas yeah. all your pears tend to be on a lean, like on the, the tat trellis or the V trellis. Yeah. Is that on purpose? My opinion is, is when you lean a branch over, it will slow down. And um, leaning a pear over, and a 15 degree angle will induce the angle of the branches to become softer and then invigorates the tree, which will then hopefully bring it into a cropping mode earlier in its life. If you look at the trees that we've been growing for 100 years, each angle of the branch is on, is on some sort of angle. Yeah. Very rarely does the branch go straight up. And I believe my, my opinion is that pears do suit being on an angle better, better than anything else, really. So we've got that bigger control here now. Rico has, or the pear sold as Rico, has a few challenges probably around crop lighting, Matt. So 
we, we do have a little bit of biennial bearing tendency in this variety. How are we, how are we managing that? From the parentage of the Camis, he's brought biennial bearing into the variety. To eliminate that, we, we've started to chemically thin heavily on the on years when the fruit sets um, excessive. Well, we did a trial last year of, of BANA and also using Brevis. There, there's been uh, different results of that. Fair to say, it's yeah, um, yeah, very variable. Very variable. Some trees that look fantastic, and uh, some trees that are actually going to be quite light. Which is also then now inducing challenges of how we chemically thin these trees again this year. One more little thing about these trees, Matt. The tops are beautifully straight. So I know that you like a little bit of mechanisation with with hedging and that sort of thing. What have you run through here? So we invested in a hedger uh, last year, and then this winter there was a little bit of growth there again. So we've just set the crop. We've uh, run through the top and the sides with a with a hedger, which has proved quite well. It's, it's worked very well, better than what we expected. I think it's fair to say it's it's a very nice block, and and once we finally crack that biennial bearing, we're we're in for some very solid tonnages. You know, getting getting well into the 60, 70 ton range um, at a high quality piece of fruit with a nice red blush. Important part about controlling the vigour of the tree. Um, in the Golden Valley is that because we're in a warm part of Australia, we can control the tree by reduced deficit irrigation, which basically means during the month of November here, we can really limit the amount of water that we apply to the tree, which can pull up the tree quite well. You know, where wetter parts of the world, this is not possible, but in Australia, we can control D6 by reduced, reduced deficit irrigation. Yeah, it works quite well. This tree looks like, yeah, it, it's got a good crop. It needs to be thinned out. Um, we, we, a tree such as this will probably single the fruit down to the ones, okay, so it will be uh, brought back to ones if it's successful. Um, but uh, we'll wait for the November drop and, uh, and see that we, what we have after that. Here we are standing in Matt's Peekaboo block, which is a, a hybridised pair between an Asian pear and a European pear. Relatively new variety in the in the world space. Matt, how are you managing this new variety and, and what are its challenges? We don't have much information on how, how this uh, variety was going to perform or behave. It has been a little bit challenging along the way. I've chosen to uh, have a spacing of one and a half by four metre spacing row trees being one and a half metres apart, and then divided the tree into four, which gave us a, uh, a 75 metre gap between the uprights of each each limb on the tree. This is uh, estimating, guessing the amount of light that the, the tree requires down that gap. And as it happens, it's worked out quite well. It's uh, It seems like a sufficient light to get between the uprights. The vigorous, the tree is quite vigorous. They grew quite quickly initially, and the cropping was up and down. I think it's fair to say. It was a bit shy to crop at the start. And um, this year it, it flowered very evenly compared to other years. It looks like it, it's setting itself up to be a, um, a reasonable crop. Last year we picked uh, a, real, a relatively small amount of, I think 22 tonne per hectare. A good quality fruit and it packed out quite well. But the challenge is this year to try and you know, take that up to 30 or 40 tonnes per hectare. The, one of the challenges with variety, it's for those unfamiliar, it's a, it's a red variety. But if we do get any shading on the tree in, in dense areas, we just get a really brown pear looking more like a nijiseki or a or hoisui. And that really has no value beyond juice here in Australia and, and most of the world. So how are we trying to avoid that, Matt? How, what are we doing to get light down to the bottom? I think it's all about controlling the vigour of the tree. And hopefully now that we have set the tree up with, with, with more flowers and, and, and a more even spread out crop, I'm hoping that the crop will control the vigour. I believe the key to getting good uh, colour within the tree is controlling the vigour of the tree. We are planning to delay head the tree to get some light back into the tree in around Christmas time and uh, take the tops off the tree with a trimmer of some sort. And also just control deficit irrigation through November. We'll, we'll certainly pull the uh, irrigation back during that period to control the vigour again. In regard to chemical control, we've kept away from any control through chemical. We've also avoided pruning at this stage because the size of this fruit is very, is, uh, very essential. We need, we need a big pair to, to be able to export it. I mean, we also have controlled bigger through summer pruning and, and manipulating the tree and bending branches during the summer and, and minimising the, the pruning during the winter. So we've seen three 
totally different blocks from the, the big old D6 pairs at 50 years old through the Rico on D6 at a much more controlled state. And now these Peekaboo on Quincy rootstock, I'm not sure if we mentioned that, with four stems here, just trained at, at a pretty low vigor. It's, it's almost hard to believe it's a pair really. So I guess to wrap it up, Matt, what are your top three tips to pair growers? How do you, how do you achieve this? Spreading that vigor over, over many branches is if it's either six foot like we have with a Rico or four here is an important part of it. So, which takes your time at setting the tree up at the start. Bending a pair over here, in my view is, is essential. It also devigorates the tree to give you a softer angle branch to, uh, to hang fruit on. Yeah, so it sounds like really your three reasons are a vigor control all of them. So it's, it's prune it well to keep that vigor. It will set up the tree structure to control vigor. When you're pruning, it's, it's about eliminating the big wood that create vigor. Making sure that the top of the tree is soft. If you have a strong top, of, if the vigor of the top of your pear tree becomes, um, you know, have a large caliber and very strong, you're going to fight vigor forever. Um, you must put enough uh, taps in the bottom of the tree to make sure that the top remains soft. So no big branches in the top, good spread of vigor across the tree and use all your available tools, whether that's irrigation, chemical, which isn't in this block or, or other mechanical tools to hold that vigor back and you can get great pears.